Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. My toxic parents-in-law demanded that we give them our beautiful beach home claiming that we owe them at least that because they raised my wife and we are in debt to them. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. The first one starts like this. Finding a house that both my wife and I liked was not easy. When we did finally agree on something in our price range, it was a beautiful split ranch right on the beach. Not the biggest house, but for us who both grew up in the cramped city, it was a mansion. I'm not saying this to brag, just more to help the story get a clear picture. On that note, I guess I need to mention my in-laws. They are extremely toxic people that in the past we tried to have as little contact with as possible. Basically holidays and birthdays and that was it because they were just horrible to be around. Both of them assumed that being parents meant they were entitled to everything their children had. More on why they think that a little bit down the line in the story, this also happened about a decade ago but I had no idea this side to tell stories existed until now. So anyway, I hope that nobody is upset by it being a little bit older. When we got the house, it was not long until my toxic in-laws showed up unannounced, they started screaming and demanding us to sign over the deed of the house to them. And just to make things really clear, they did not give any money towards the house, they just felt they were entitled to be the ones listed as the owners and then allow us to live there. Citing they would not charge us much rent. And yes, they wanted the deed and then to charge us rent on our own house that we paid for. Me, you're not getting us to sign anything. If you want the deed to a house, then go pay for one yourself. Father-in-law, she is our daughter. The two of you owe us way more than this house is worth. You should be grateful that we don't ask for more. Wife, how do I owe you? You did not even help pay for the house, my car or even my college tuition. Mother-in-law, we raised you, spent years spending money to keep you fed and a roof over your head. Father-in-law, do you have any idea how much it was to bring a child up? I could have left you in the streets to die. Maybe I should have if you are this ungrateful. Me, she doesn't owe you anything for being raised. That's the job of a parent and you don't get things back to make up the money. She's an adult and doesn't need to give a damn thing to you. Now get the hell away from my house. Mother-in-law, give me those damn keys. Maybe I will make it so your hands can never use them. She lunged for my keys which had not only the house key but my car fob and office key attached. I pulled away to not let her get them and she decided to act like an animal and scratch me in the face. She had those really long fake nails and the scratches felt like a burn. I pushed her and that was when father-in-law got physically involved. Also, just a side note, I think it's funny that they were fighting for the keys, like even having those would give them ownership of the house or something. I just didn't want them going in or stealing my car or something else. Too unstable to let them get away with anything. Father-in-law started attacking me and I was just doing the bare minimum to defend myself. I was younger and stronger and did not need to get in trouble for breaking an arm or something. Somebody must have called the police because they came and broke up the fight before taking us all aside for statements. I explained what happened and my wife also gave her story. I looked at her and saw that she fought with her mother too and was all scratched up and her shirt was torn. We both clearly looked attacked while the in-laws looked perfectly fine. They were claiming that we showed up and tried to break into their home, but they lived almost an hour away. We tell them that we were attacked and want charges pressed against them for assault. I have no idea which one did but I had a black eye so swollen I could not see out of that eye for the next like 3 days. They did not pull back anything and were fighting with the intent to hurt us, they were arrested and booked before being let go until the court hearing later. It was not meant to go to the trial at first and instead we were gonna avoid that by having them apologize, plead guilty and get a lighter sentence. When asked questions my wife and I talked about past toxic things her parents have done, they got angry and claimed they didn't assault anybody, that all they did was punish their child and it was the same as giving her a spanking. I swear that's the exact analogy they used, as for me they claimed that I got in the way and attacked first. They pled not guilty and now the case had to go to court in front of a jury. Another side note was that years later we found out from my wife's half-brother that their defense attorney basically begged them to not go through with the trial because they couldn't win this. That the probation they were being offered was a great deal they should take. During the trial they gave the same story of being allowed to punish their child and the judge and jury were not happy. As well as claiming also that raising a child to them meant that they were entitled to anything the child had as payment. Even pulling up articles that said it cost about a million dollars to raise a child from birth to adulthood and that was the amount they were entitled to get from my wife and by extension me. 
Aside from showing our injuries as proof of the assault, we did not really need to fight much on our end. They were doing a great job for us by digging themselves into a worse hole of looking bad. Not even denying attacking us, just denying that they didn't believe it was assault. In our state, a felony level of assault means a minimum of a year in prison with more possible. So we knew they were going to get at least that and once they were found guilty, they were both being sent to prison for 18 months without parole for the assault. It might not seem like a long time, but for us it was actually longer than that. Under the law, they would automatically face a 5-year prison sentence if they engaged in further harassment, assault or battery in the future. I don't think that they would be able to come near us after the 18 months without ending up getting arrested again, plus it's 10 years later and we went full no contact with them. They got out and I'm sure, but haven't tried to come near us again or even contact us. Also, according to my wife's half-brother, they complain how we attack them and still play the victims. Saying that they wish they had sent my wife away because she was such a bad daughter. So, sadly, prison did not break them of any delusions. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, if you have family like this, you don't even need enemies anymore. I feel so bad for OP. Let's hope that they never have to deal with these parents again. Either way, if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment since that would help me tremendously. The next story is titled, My wife found out that my mother and I have been lying to her about our baby, zero months old, four months. This all went down about an hour ago and my wife is still crying in our bathroom with the door locked. So the backstory, we had our son, now 11 months old, while my wife is in residency. She took a few weeks off before giving birth and then went back to work a few months after, while I transitioned my hours to part-time so that I could stay at home and raise our son. My mom moved in with us shortly after the birth in order to help out, which allows me to get in the few hours of work per day and also not get swamped with taking care of the baby and housework. She is quite old-fashioned and would definitely not prefer this arrangement with me being a stay-at-home dad, but she hasn't said anything to either of us and has been a great help. For anyone unfamiliar with medical residency, it's brutal. My wife has just over a year left of it though. Sometimes she comes and goes for one to three days and our son is asleep the whole time she is home, which has been happening more as his sleep schedule shifted to sleeping through the night. My mom and I make sure that when she is home and the baby is awake, my wife gets him 100%. I know it's been hard on her, but unfortunately, it's just gonna be this way for another year. The first big milestone she missed was him rolling over, when she got home, my mom pulled her over to the baby all excited. I thought she was gonna tell her, but instead she says, Julie, you came home right on time. He's been moving about as if he's gonna roll over. They both stood there encouraging him and right on cue he rolls. My wife was elated, she was so worried and guilty about not being there and she took it as proof that she can still be a present mother while working. So we continued. I send texts over little things she misses through the day so that it's not completely unbelievable, but my wife has been present for every single big milestone. He coincidentally started crawling with her right there, his first words were in front of her and he began standing cruising and walking when she happened to be home. The walking one was difficult, there was a tough 7 day stretch where she just was not home during the daytime when he was awake and his walking went from teetering to walking a couple steps pretty confidently in that time. We put little bean bags in one of his pants pockets so he would be wobbly and unbalanced and it looked believable since he fell after the first step like he was doing a week ago. And yes, it was mean to our poor son, but my wife's face was worth it. Today though, it all unraveled. So far he can just say mama, dada and nana and yesterday he started saying bye bye. My wife has today off and has been home all morning. My mom and I have been trying to get him to say bye all day without giving it away that we already know he can say bye. Successfully got him to say bye to the ducks at the park and we both gushed over his newest word the whole way home. My wife was using my phone to take pictures of him and began showing my mom at home while telling her about his newest word acquisition. She was swiping through my gallery and saw a video from yesterday and goes, oh, you never sent me this one. And it was literally like a slow motion film happening in front of my eyes. I had taken the video of him yesterday waving bye bye. My wife is not an idiot, she figured the whole ruse out pretty much instantly. 
I've never seen her look so upset and heartbroken before. I could not say or do anything to comfort her. Now she has locked herself in the bathroom crying and won't come out. I'm on our bed hoping someone can please tell me what to do to make this better. And yeah, ripe stars, let me know in the comments whether you think OP is the a-hole here or not. Either way, comment number one said, this is a difficult situation. Right now, my suggestion would be to give your wife space. She needs to process this. It's hard, but the fact is that you cannot do anything to fix what she is feeling. Her emotions are incredibly heightened, not only from new motherhood, but from stress and pressure, and they are hers to ride out until she is ready to be helped. And frankly, she might not want that help from you. While I understand why you did what you did, and I see the love and compassion that fueled the choice, you and your mom were dishonest in a very complex and conspiratorial way. That's simply it. And your wife, even if she also sees the love behind the choices you made, has been impacted by your dishonesty. She has been wronged. Right now, it's most important that you don't try to fix or chase away that feeling, because if you do, you will not lay a foundation to build up from this low and difficult point. Let your wife decide when she is ready to talk and be helped and what form that help will take. Give her space. And another comment said, Oh gosh, you all sound like you're trying to do the best you can. I think it's sweet that you and your mom are trying hard to make your wife feel less bad about being so busy with work. Lying is not black and white. You all have good intentions. And yeah, ripe stars, I would agree with that. I know that some people say that you should never lie, but there are definitely situations where it's better to lie than to say the truth. And maybe in this case, at least if it wouldn't have come out, then it would have been better to lie to the wife. But of course, if you're getting caught, that makes it even worse. But as I said, I think everyone feels differently about this, but let me know what you think in the comments. Now we have an update to the story and it reads like this. Don't think anyone would particularly care about an update, but I appreciated the insight anyway. So here is an update. After I wrote the original post, my mom took my son to stay overnight with my wife's sister so that the two of us could have the house to ourselves. We pretty much just talked for an hour while constantly reaffirming that we love each other a lot and want to sort this out. I apologized and explained why I did what I did and she said that feeling like she was there for our son's milestones was really just a band-aid solution that did not actually convince her that she was present. She said that if she actually had been using the milestones to feel like she was present, this would probably have felt worse for her. Anyway, but since she wasn't in her words deluding herself into thinking she's actually home, her main issue was that I lied which hurt her feelings. I apologized and explained that I honestly thought that she would prefer the lying if given the choice. She said she understood where I was coming from and that she felt betrayed when she realized, but she sees that I was doing it because I love her and she thinks, well, probably laugh about it with our grandkids one day. And yes, I'm very aware, I don't deserve my wife. Some things came out on my end that I was not gonna tell her and did not mention in my last post, namely, that I'm scared she's gonna become, how do I say this in a YouTube-friendly way, um, that she might try to end her life or something. My uncle ended his own life when I was a child, in part from working in a high-stress job where he made a huge and costly mistake. One of my wife's colleagues also attempted this while she was on maternity leave. Being a working mom is bad enough, being a resident in this program is bad enough and both combined are a recipe for trouble. Since our son was born and the incident with her colleague happened, I've been afraid that if her home life was not perfect, it would push her over the edge. Anyways, she reassured me that that's not happening and I think saying it out loud also made me realize it's a pretty irrational, groundless fear. We ordered takeout and sat together watching the real videos I have of all of our son's firsts. I also have a special folder of pictures and videos of my son with my wife, so we went through that after. She almost choked from laughing so hard when I tentatively revealed the beanbag trick. I'm the laughing stock of her friend group chat. So I guess we are already at the stage where we are laughing about it. Thank you to those who responded to the last post and the stereotype of someone in r slash relationships advocating divorce every time anything happens is true. And yeah, ripe stars, actually, I noticed that as well in various different subreddits, actually, that redditors very quickly jump to conclusions, especially tough ones like advocating for divorce. To be honest, in some legal advice posts it was similar, of course there usually it wasn't about divorce but about legal issues. Basically, no matter what your bad neighbor, colleague, friend or whatever did, just sue them. Sometimes Reddit can be funny. And the next one is titled Revenge for my late wife. A few years after my wife passed away, I got an email out of the blue from an old friend telling me that he saw my late wife's photos on a swinger's dating site. 
I did not judge him for being on this particular type of site and he sent me the link to the profile. On this website, like many others, you could read the profile and see one or two more photos, but you could not email the person unless you were a premium member. Since I couldn't reach the person, I asked my friend to contact the person and demand that they take the photos down. She didn't reply to this request and I contacted the website support and told them my story. The website admin told me that they could not take down the photos and only a DMCA copyright claim could get the photos removed. I could not submit a copyright claim, I didn't take photos, so there was no remedy to getting my late wife's photos off this person's profile. Enter the pro revenge, I decided to join the site as a premium member, but not as myself. I set up a profile as a couple looking for a single female to join us on vacations and on our boat. The reason for this was because that is what the offending person was looking for on their profile. Our intention was to catfish the gold digger. So I guess it's time to introduce the characters. You have the gold digger DG, my friend's wife posing as my wife FW, not the same friend that found the profile though, and me. Here is how it went down. First we befriended GD online, FW sent a message to GD, who listed in her profile that she was in the same province as us and asked GD what city or town she was in. As we have an arm RV and a boat that we like to travel around the province with and take mini vacations on different lakes. A few days later she replies and asks for photos. I sent a few photos of me and my friend's wife on his boss's boat from the previous summer. And yes, they gave me permission to use the photos and some others from their vacations that didn't include him in the photo. After about two weeks of back and forth, FW asks for any sexy photos, to which GD sends some sexy photos without her face because that would give her away as not being the person in the photos on her profile. This went on for another two days until FW asked her to do some FaceTime video. GD quickly replied that she had a microphone but her web camera was broken. She had a PO box that she had people send her gifts to, so we sent her an old webcam that I had. We were getting right into exposing her and FW agreed to to come over to my place and use my photo studio and do the video and audio chat in front of my green screen that I put a photo of a large house interior onto with green screen software. The conversation goes like this. FW, hey, did you get that webcam we sent to your post office box? GW, audio only. Yes, thank you, but I'm really camera shy, so I did not set it up yet. FW, why would you be shy around us? As I walk into the frame behind her. GD, oh, both of you are there? Me, yes, I just wanted to say hi and let you two talk, but I'm still curious why you are shy around us. GD, well the photos on my profile are a little old, and I've put on a few pounds since they were taken. FW, I understand, it took me a long time to get back to this size after fighting with it for years. We promise we'll not judge you based on your size, besides hubby likes plus size girls. We almost had our catfisher hooked. GD, hold on, give me 10 minutes and I will change and put the webcam on. About 15 minutes later we get a video call from GD. She is only lit by her computer screen and not easy to make out. FWC, that was not hard, was it? GD, no, but I really did not think you would like me as I look now. But we know she never looked like those photos because they were of my late wife. FW, you look very beautiful, do you have more light? GD walks away from the camera and turns on some serious lighting, like what you might see on a girl webcam site, and the camera quality was much better than the cheap old one that I had sent. FW, that's much better, let me call Martin, not my real name, over. Me, she is stunning, just what have we been looking for? The hook is starting to catch. Again, I should let you two talk and I have some planning to do for our next vacation. I then walk away from the camera and go to my PC that is recording the video call and capturing screenshots. I suspect that this GD is not just looking for some suckers to take her on expensive vacations, but that she also does cam modeling work as BBW cam models can make a lot of money because some dudes see them as being easy. After about an hour and a half of talking, FW has gotten lots of personal info about GD, including her real first name and that she works at a private camp for girls in the summer. And she also admitted to doing BBW cam work for extra cash. After a second video call, we told her about our upcoming vacation to Hedonism, which we found on the web as a popular swinger resort and we would need her full name and a photocopy of her passport to make the reservations and arrange air travel. She fell for it and we had everything we needed. With a little help from Google Maps, we found the camp that she worked for and the contact info. We contacted the camp office looking for a job reference for GD and sure enough we contacted the right camp. 
When I contacted her with all our info and asked her to remove the photos of my late wife from her profile on the Swinger site and any other site she might be using them on, this was her reply via PM. GD, you piece of crap, you catfished me. Me, no, I just wanted you to stop using my late wife's photos for your single and swinger profiles. GD, those are my photos. Me, no they are not, I have your real photo and you don't even look like my late wife. Even if I found them on the web, so they are free to use because they are public. Me, so by that logic, the images I have of you in your underwear on cam are public too? GD, no, no, those are my photos and I can prove it. Do you have the original copyright on them? Since I took them from the web, I have the copyright, correct? I know this is not how copyright works, but I'm stirring the pot. Me, hello? Me, hello, are you still there? She then blocked me. Since I'd already created a fake profile and paid the annual yearly fee, I decided not to let it go to waste. I changed the profile to include her images and links to the private video chats along with her personal info and named the girl's summer camp that she worked at. A few months later, I got a message from the administrator of the site that two of the photos had been removed due to a copyright claim by blank blank camp for girls because of a copyrighted logo on a shirt she wore during a private video call that I screenshotted. I figured by this they knew who she was and that she had been exposed. When I called the camp office again for a job reference, they said that they could not discuss this person as she is no longer associated with the camp. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.